This is a 16 year old Bermuda lawn. It has never been dethatched. It has never been verticut. Nothing like that has ever been done to this lawn. So the question is, when would I do that? Or should I do that to my lawn? Let me explain the processes first and I'll explain why I don't do that. Now I'm getting ready to put growth regulator down on this because we're having to cut this. I could cut this lawn every 24 hours. That's how healthy it is. But you have to understand the difference between a residential type lawn, which is really thick and nice looking versus sports turf, golf course, soccer fields, that kind of thing. So hold on. So the question comes into play from my video the other day, when would you dethatch? When would you verticut a lawn? <laughs> Let's explain what they are real quick so you understand. This is a consumer grade dethatcher. You're looking at prongs and I'll show you here in a second what this does to the grass. I'm talking about Bermuda grass folks not other types of cool season grasses. This probably also applies to St. Augustine because it has a real strong rhizome system <laughs> under it. Keep this off your Bermuda grass. You don't want to use something like this. I'm not talking about what the golf course industry uses or the sports turf industry, which is a verticutter, a verticutter. A lot of times you'll hear golf courses and sports turf talk about dethatching and verticutting. It's a completely different process for them. They use actual cutting tools, and yes, it'll cut up some of that thatch. The other thing that's real popular in Europe that's coming to the US is something called uh, phrase cutting. And what is phrase cutting? It's this weird machine that actually goes along and scalps the entire surface of the Bermuda down to dirt. It's almost like a really hard scalp. It takes off the entire top layer, all the thatch, everything, takes it down to dirt, and it relies on the established rhizomes and root systems to grow back up and to give you a real thin, thinned out turf. Why do they do that? It's because they want the ball to roll better on it. It's better on sports cleats. It's a much thinner turf. It would be hard to play soccer on my yard because the grass is so thick. It's gonna slow down that ball roll. Well, the same thing applies to the golf course industry, the sports turf industry, but it doesn't really apply to the consumer industry. The consumer wants a thick, lush lawn. That doesn't come from dethatching, and it doesn't come from necessarily verticutting, and it doesn't come from phrase, phrase mowing. So let me show you what a dethatcher does versus a verticutter. Okay, so this is, this is what happens when you use a dethatcher on Bermuda. It goes along and it pulls up the rhizomes, it pulls up the stolons, and basically this is what ends up happening. You end up pulling up all this structure here and you can, and it'll, it'll do some damage to the lawn. On the other hand, if you use a verticutter, you are basically doing this. And you are cutting this and thinning it out. Now it spins, so you will get some thatch come up. You will get some dirt come up, but it's nothing like this. Again, this is a consumer grade dethatcher as we think of it. This is a, this is a verticutter. When golf courses and sports turfs do dethatching, quote unquote, they're using a verticutter and then they're picking that up. You will not see tongs or patines like this on a golf course. So I guess the question is, when would I dethatch? When would I verticut? When should I aerate? I think a lot of people overthink this. I think there are a lot of people out there that have weak lawns and they think that dethatching and verticutting are really gonna help their lawn thicken up when in fact you should work on your soil health I'd rather you get a soil test and put down the right products and improve your soil health to thicken up your lawn. Would I ever do this? I'll never dethatch my Bermuda because we do hard scalps. Every spring, I am taking my lawn basically down to dirt. <laughs> I'm taking it down to dirt. I remove that whole layer of grass. I, re re I remove most of the thatch that's out here. So every year, I'm kind of doing it anyways. I don't need to do it. I don't need that extra step. 
Vert cutting will, I will tell you this, vert cutting will open up your soil for, for water penetration. That is one benefit of it. So if you have a perfectly thick lawn, um, and if you wanted to increase soil penetration or thin out your turf a little bit, you could do a vert cut. I would probably rather see majority of people doing a core aeration. I think a core aeration is going to benefit your lawn more than anything. But today, one of the things we do out here to control some of our thatch is we start to use growth regulator this time of year. Look, my lawn, I can't do anything else to it. It's just perfectly healthy. I have no fungus. I have no weeds. It's growing like crazy. I really have to cut it almost every 24 to 48 hours. Um, what I need to do now is I need to slow down that vertical growth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to apply growth regulator to my front. Important note, the product that I'm using is a foliar transfer product. It's a granular. So you have your grass blades, the little tiny particles stick to the grass blades and the chemical transfer happens that way. So the application process is kind of important. You really want to put this out. And the reason why I use the granular is it's so quick. I come out here and in 10 minutes, my treatment's done. I don't have any mixing. I don't have to worry about oversprays. I can put it out on a windy day. I don't have to worry about that. The granular for me is a much easier product. I come out, 10 minutes, I'm done. But I like to come out and I apply it when there's dew on the grass in the morning. The other option you can do is wait till the sun starts to set, run your irrigation system a little bit, and then put this on and let it sit on the grass overnight. Now, I have a little trick that I do. I go back out and I re-mist this a little bit. Um, also, you don't wanna do this and then cut your lawn, so cut your lawn first. So, one of the ways that we deal with thatch in our lawn is to, number one, if you're having a thatch problem, start picking up some of your clippings. Number two, put down, like I said, put down some of your mic, uh, put down some dirt booster, put down some of the microbial pack, boost that digestive process up that'll naturally eat your thatch. Thatch should not be a problem. It's never really been a problem on my lawn, um, and it really should never be a problem on yours, especially if you're taking care of your lawn the right way and doing a hard scalp. So I'm getting ready to apply the growth regulator. By the way, I always link to this Earthway. That's my favorite spreader now, huge hopper. I want you to look at the hole size. Let me zoom in here. And I want you to look at the hole size. That is pretty close to, that is pretty close to just over eighth of an inch. If you can see that hole size. That's what I'm using for the growth regulator. Pretty much what I've learned with growth regulator, this granular growth regulator, it's super, super fine. It's like salt. Um, you're better off to go the smallest hole possible Go one way, and if you need to put more down, then go the other way. But you want to apply this growth regulator in the morning when there's a dew, or run your irrigation system at night, get the grass wet, and then apply it and I'm put doing it on. This with one hand, people. I'm just going to put a small amount in here. And you can see just how fine this is. So the other benefit to putting out products like this or any product out when there's dew on the grass are your lines. <laughs> this is, I love putting products out when there's a dew because you can just see the proper spacing and that's a critical factor. Everyone always talks about the hole size, but proper spacing and knowing how far these products throw. So using that, using that early morning dew really help. So another reason that golf courses uh, do a verticut, uh, as they call it, some of the golf courses, golf courses will generally call verticut a dethatching. They don't use tine dethatchers on Bermuda. On their Bermuda, they do not use tines. They actually use a verticut to dethatch or thin out the turf. They do that a lot of times for golf courses that are going to be doing an overseed. 
If you have a real thick turf, real thick Bermuda, and you want to do an overseed project, verticutting or thinning out your turf actually helps the overseed. It's less competitive, it's not as thick, and it'll help it out. I don't like to overseed, period. Um, I've never overseeded my Bermuda. Of course, we did that test patch and we had the horrible weed seeds in that stuff. It's just, I, I just don't like to overseed Bermuda. There's just too many risks involved with it. One reason why uh, a lot of courses now are starting to do the phrase mowing is number one, it gives them that thin turf because they're cutting it really short to get good ball roll out of it, but it also removes a layer of weed seeds. So it allows them to actually do um, use less uh, chemicals on their on their actual turf out there so that's another reason why they're doing it so there's a bunch of there's a bunch of phrases out there and I really think that the average homeowner can get a little bit confused on what they should do to their lawn if you have a Bermuda lawn you scalp in the spring and scalp it really hard take that layer off scalp it as hard as you can number two do a core aeration. Core aeration is probably the best thing you can do for your lawn. Number three, monitor your thatch clippings. Monitor your thatch. Um, I think one of the big problems is people don't cut off. I said this yesterday in our video, in our dethatching video, people don't cut often enough and they get clipping piles and they cut the grass when it's wet. And when you do that, you start to get it, the, the decomposition of those clippings can't keep up that's when you might need to put in some kind of booster, some kind of microbial or fungus booster on the lawn too. But for us, again, 16 year old turf, my lawn is absolutely gorgeous. I have people stop every day just to look at my lawn. It looks like a golf course, it's short. We have been keeping it at half inch, now we're keeping it at three quarters. I will never verticut my lawn and I will never dethatch my lawn, period. My scalping is probably more aggressive than most people. I will tell you that. Most people just scalp down a little bit. I scalp down pretty close to dirt. When I do that, I take care of all that all that nasty process. So I hope that's cleared that up. Again, um, we're starting to put down growth regulator again. That should help. I have a new house project that I'm gonna be doing for you guys. My, I told you in the last video, my son and daughter-in-law uh, amazingly excuse me, my daughter and son-in-law, amazingly, were able to actually buy a house in this market. Yeah, so it's an older home, Bermuda lawn in the front, crappy yard out back. So we're gonna go over there do it and we're gonna analyze that lawn and we're gonna show you how we go into a weak lawn that really hasn't been taken care of and how we boost that up. That should be cool. I got a bunch of stuff coming out. Hit subscribe, talk to you later. Bye.